Good morning, everyone. Mayor Michael Foley here live from Westbrook City Hall. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. We come to you today with a uh, more positive message as we begin to um, come out of this crisis and situation that we're dealing with. And we thank you all for uh, taking the time to be with us today so we can uh, update everyone on the city of Westbrook's response to uh, this crisis here uh, specifically. So I do have some prepared remarks um, like we have with other sessions. I'll read those prepared remarks and then we will uh, go to some of our city staff. Uh, today we'll be joined um, at some point by Dr. Peter Lancia. He's currently uh, uh, honoring some city frontline city staff right now, um, school department staff right now. And uh, we're joined by state representative Drew Gatin. Um, we're also joined by fire chief uh, Andrew Turcott. Um, State Representative Gatine will provide us an update on some state related issues that uh, he's been working on. And then uh, uh, Fire Chief Turcott will be uh, provide us a brief update on the virus in respect to the city itself and uh, also provide us um, be available for a question and answer. And then our Economic Development Director, uh, Daniel Stevenson, will update us on some economic development programs that we have and some new ones that I'll be announcing today. So thank you again uh, for joining us, and I'll dig right into um, our remarks. So to the citizens and businesses of Westbrook, we hope everyone is healthy and well. As we approach our seventh week of this state of emergency, many are experiencing frustration and impatience in complying with the various rules and regulations. We can now be encouraged by some light on the horizon with scheduled plans for reopening. We encourage everyone to hang in there as best they can in these final days of spring as things will be looking up for summer. Weather is improving and as things open up more, we can begin to enjoy more of the outdoors and our community. We applaud all for the great job complying with all current and previous rules and recommendations. We remain in close communication with appropriate officials on developments related to this situation and would like to provide additional updates on the city's response, plans, and handling of issues that arise due to the COVID-19 state of emergency. And today, we'll be outlining our plan for reopening. There have been many confirmed cases and deaths in Maine, including some city residents and employees. Our thoughts and prayers are with those families who have been affected. Ensuring the safety of our employees and the general public while also continuing to provide the critical services necessary to run the city is of paramount importance to us. Police, fire and rescue and public services have been operational and we thank those dedicated employees serving us during this crisis. In order to minimize the exposure to employees, volunteers and the general public, we have done the following. Previously, we declared a state of emergency, which remains in effect until further notice. All actions are reported to the city council on a regular basis and previous actions can be reviewed on the city website. I urge everyone to follow Governor Mills executive order as of April 29th, mandating a series of continued and new restrictions through May 31st, including a stay safer at home directive economic and community development restarting plan and a requirement for cloth face coverings in public settings where physical distancing measures are difficult to maintain. You can visit uh, the state's website. Uh, they have a restarting main page and that's included in my printed announcement for the detailed plan. My, uh, my friend has uh, given me a uh, Red Sox mask so I can try to feel a little bit about baseball. So I'll be wearing this out in the community and I encourage everyone else to possibly get a mask that of their favorite sports team or favorite design. And we'll be looking at uh, getting some uh, for our city employees with a, a city logo, as I'll mention shortly. Using economic development TIF funds, we created the Small Business Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program in partnership with the Westbrook Environmental Improvement Corporation, also known as WIC, to establish a fund to award up to $1,500 grants to help businesses in need and retain them in our community. 
this program should be approved next week and we will begin accepting applications soon with details available on our website. And our economic development, Daniel, development director, Daniel Stevenson, will provide us more of a detailed update on this program. We've begun to finalize the fiscal year 2021 budget, which will result in no increase in the tax rate to help residents and businesses during this challenging time. Difficult decisions were made that we do not take lightly, and we appreciate everyone's understanding to achieve this goal. This budget will be presented to the City Council on May 18th, and the Finance Committee will complete its review process for the remainder of the month. We've begun to collaborate with area leaders to advocate Congress to give states more flexibility for the use of CARES Act funds to meet the needs of communities and address collateral damage and financial hardship caused by the crisis. We need to advocate for increased assistance and allow these additional funds to make up the decreases in state revenue resulting from this pandemic. Until then, we are committed to making sure our fiscal house remains in order. And Representative Drew Gatine will speak directly to this as he, along with uh, uh, State Senator Kathy Breen, who also represents Westbrook, have uh, been leading an effort in that area along with State Treasurer Henry Beck, and he will uh, review that uh, for us uh, momentarily. We recently announced the cancellation of our annual Memorial Day parade and ceremonies and replaced this event with a Memorial Day tribute. Visit our Facebook page for more information on this upcoming event. Recently announced with the Westbrook Gorham Community Chamber of Commerce, the cancellation of our annual Westbrook Together Days events. Though that is disappointing, we appreciate the effort that the group does to planning that event and it, it, they are committing to, for a bigger and better celebration next year. And so we can look forward to that and we, uh, we appreciate uh, their work and, and making that difficult decision. We are starting preparations for the upcoming state primary and school budget validation referendum election, which has been moved to July 14th. The time period which voters can request absentee ballots has been extended. We are encouraging everyone to vote absentee to help protect the health and safety of all. This is not a mandate, but an urgent request. Many of the people who work on elections are in the high risk category. And while we don't know what the virus will look like on election day, making this commitment now to vote absentee will help keep the community healthy. You can request an absentee ballot online by mail or by phone and the city clerk will mail your ballot to complete and mail back. We are developing a public service announcement for this effort and you can visit our website or contact our election hotline at 591-8116 for more information. We previously announced spending and hiring freezes and a furlough program. These are very difficult times for everyone and we are blessed with an exceptional workforce. Decisions that can adversely impact our dedicated employees are not entered into lightly. However, the city has a legal obligation to maintain a balanced budget even under these challenging conditions, and we take this very seriously. Through a major donation, we previously launched the Westbrook Warren Memorial Foundation Emergency Arts Fund and are still accepting applications for the remaining funds. Details are available on our website, and Dan uh, will also update us on that as well with economic development updates. We will uh, be giving final approval to this item at the Westbrook City Council on Monday evening, and checks will be going out uh, that evening following the city council's approval to assist those who have made that application. And so, like I said, there are funds available, so we encourage everyone to check that out and apply. We previously launched Westbrook's takeout and delivery support effort and contest to support our local businesses and win $100 gift certificates. Thank you to all who have participated and congratulations to the winners thus far. We thank everyone for supporting local businesses and don't forget to get your entries in. And Dan will also uh, briefly mention that as well. Superintendent Dr. Lancia also announced that the Westbrook School Department will continue distance learning and remote operations for the remainder of the 2019 school year. Uh, he previously made that announcement. Details are on their website regarding their response. 
We have also been working with them for ways to honor the Westbrook High School class of 2020 to include some special events and banners pl placed throughout the downtown recognizing seniors. We are proud of all the work everyone has done to support these efforts and I'm excited to get those banners up in the community. Also, thank you to some area businesses such as Full Court Press for their efforts to get um, signs for uh, seniors to put in front of their residents. Also, today I'm announcing the City of Westbrook reopening plan as follows. Immediate actions and following all CDC guidelines, we will begin a phased increase of workforce at City Hall with existing staff as appropriate to continue critical operations and prepare for our phased reopening. This facility will remain closed to the public and we will continue to assist with transactions remotely. Planning and code enforcement will begin appointments for one person at a time to meet with staff and obtain permits from their front counter. We will also continue to improve our inspection services and soon begin inspections for outstanding business licensing. The planning board will be meeting virtually this month to review and approve many pending projects. All this is being done in an effort to continue the momentum in growth we have been experiencing. Contact the Planning and Code Enforcement Office for more information and instructions on getting an appointment with them. Public Services Workforce will return to its normal schedule to continue all cleanup functions with focus on downtown and Main Street to pre prepare for remaining businesses opening June 1st. The Westbrook Community Center, in an effort to provide a convenient and affordable option for parents to drop off their children and get back to work, will be offering a seven-week program beginning May 5th called Community Clubhouse. This will be open to Westbrook students currently in grades one through four, only with a phased enrollment. Also, summer camp is tentatively scheduled to begin on June 22nd with registration opening May 4th. Contact them for more details on these programs. We hope this program will help to provide those who need to return to work some childcare options that they may not have now with uh, school closure. So like I said, this will be a phased approach and we will be increasing the amount as we can possibly along with following all the CDC guidelines. So contact the community center for more information. Starting today, we will be opening all closed parks and athletics fields that have been previously closed. Play structures and courts where physical distancing is not possible will remain closed until June 1st. So for those who have been wanting to get out on the baseball fields, the soccer fields, use the track, using appropriate CDC guidelines and social distancing, those facilities will all be open. And so once we get some good weather, hopefully tomorrow, people can get out there and start using those facilities. For those having difficulty to pay the May 15th property tax payment, please contact the tax collector and we will work with, the, with all who need assistance for the remainder of the fiscal year. So like I said, please, if you're having difficulty to make the May 15th tax payment, please contact us. We found that a majority of our property tax payments are automatically paid through escrows and we've already begun to be, begin receiving those, but those who need some assistance, please contact us and we'll work with you. We are working with American Roots in the Dana Wart Mill to secure additional protective masks for staff returning to work, and they have been a great partner for other personal protective equipment. Hoping to get some masks that they're making that have our, our coveted uh, Westbrook swoosh logo, and look forward to, to having those for our staff, uh, as well as to show some community pride. Work with businesses and organizations allowed to reopen, assisting to obtain the COVID-19 prevention certifications from the badges certification badges from the main DECD. And Dan will also be talking about those economic development initiatives. Again, all those items I just outlined are immediate. So those are happening right away, right now, and we are looking forward to this time uh, to begin uh, having things go in the other direction. On May 26th, uh, this is tentative and following all CDC guidelines, we will be returning the remaining furloughed employees to begin preparing for uh, limited open municipal facilities. And then on June 1st, 
Again, this is tentative and following all CDC guidelines. We will be opening City Hall, the Walker Memorial Library and Community Center to the public with potential limitations. Plexiglass barriers have been installed in our customer service settings. Limited access to public safety building uh, by appointment only will remain and we will be opening the remaining play structures in and courts with the posted guidelines. We will be updating our emergency funeral protocol. And the, one of the things I'm very excited about, as I know many folks are for our downtown, we will be having a ribbon cutting and grand opening for the Frog and Turtle expansion and deck to kick off the opening of restaurants and businesses here in the city of Westbrook on June 1st. More details will be out uh, with information on that event, though we are very excited to be working with the owners of the Frog and Turtle uh, to, to help us kick off uh, Westbrook's reopening for business. And we will encourage and assist opening of restaurants and other businesses. And we will, we will also begin to explore eased restrictions in our downtown to allow for outside sales. And this will include restaurants and retail operations to potentially allow people a more comforting way to, to serve these restaurants and businesses while having the opportunity to remain outside in our main street in downtown. And then we hope the city council will hold, begin to hold live in-person meetings to include first approval of the fiscal year 2021 budget with hybrid options for public participations. We'll see how we can utilize Zoom and Facebook Live to allow people who don't feel comfortable to come down to a meeting the opportunity to participate. Then June 15th, uh, the City Council will hold another live in-person meeting to include final approval of our fiscal year 2021 budget with, again, hybrid options for public participation. And then be beginning in July and August, again, tentative and following CDC guidelines, we will begin to encourage and assist the opening of any remaining businesses and organizations here in the City of Westbrook. And then, as I mentioned earlier, on July 14th, we will have the state primary election and school budget validation referendum. And we hope, again, encourage people to uh, participate in that election via absentee, though we will be making accommodations to continue to have in-person voting. Though, as we outlined earlier and as we will share in our upcoming PSA, we just hope that uh, folks will choose absentee to protect the health uh, and safety of our community. Again, as always, this situation is a fluid and rapidly evolving situation that requires close monitoring and the need to adapt quickly. We continue to rely upon the governor, Maine CDC, and our coronavirus task force for guidance as we continue to monitor this public health situation. We modify all directives as appropriate and provide additional updates to everyone with changes. Under the continued advisement, we should minimize our public contact in order to reduce the spread and not set us back. So please continue to practice the rules and recommendations to protect us all. We don't wanna to have to delay any of these dates. In fact, we hope that eventually there may be some improvement to some of these dates as the, the issues decline here in our communities. And then we hope that we don't get set back to delay any of those further. Remember these preventative actions are being taken out of abundance of caution and concern for everyone. We apologize for any inconveniences you may experience as a result of these measures. And as I've always mentioned, we continue to encourage everyone to check on their neighbors, especially our seniors, and help each other out if and when possible. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with all affected by this crisis. Let's remain strong right now to keep each other and ourselves healthy and protect our first responders and healthcare providers. Our community is strong and we will come out stronger. For more information, you can visit our website and I thank you uh, everyone for taking the time to listen today and participate. We are really looking forward and exciting to potential opening and different activities beginning to resume here in the city of Westbrook. With that, let me just check everything here. We will, and again, this message will be posted, uh, written message will be posted on the city's Facebook page and city's website for folks to review uh, the city of Westbrook's opening plan. There are some details that will be established as part of each of those items that we've outlined. 
how things will look here at City Hall and what the lines look like and the, how many people can be allowed in the facility. And we will work together for everyone that. But we are definitely uh, looking forward to uh, some things going in the other direction. With that, I'll turn it over to uh, Fire Chief uh, and Public Health Officer, Andrew Turcott to provide us a quick update from his perspective on the issues facing the community and the virus and, uh, and as he helps us to plan moving in the other direction as well. Chief. Thank you, Mayor Foley. As Mayor Foley alluded, one of our major focuses really has been, been getting the city and our services back up and running in a safe manner following all applicable CDC guidelines. In addition, secondary to COVID, a number of our resources have been expending on purchasing all the necessary PPE for our essential workforce. In addition, we've had to purchase decontamination items to include a number of cleaning materials, all of which we did not purchase or have budgeted within the current fiscal year. We have worked hard to secure funding through grants and donations, but there still remains cost, which again, we did not anticipate and we are reaching out to our congressional reps in an effort to get additional funding through existing CARES Act or for future funding. As Mayor Foley also stated, Governor Mills announced plans for the gradual reopening of Maine's economy, which was announced this past Tuesday, which is certainly great news. According to that plan, progression will be in different stages. They will occur month by month, depending upon the success of previous stages. So for example, stage one, which begins today. And if there are no new trends, that stage, uh, stage two will begin on June, stage three in July and et cetera. If Maine CDC, CDC detects a resurgence of the virus, the state will move quickly to halt progression through additional stages and will re-implement restrictions to protect public health and the safety. And as the governor outlined in her vision for restarting the economy, public health consideration will be at the foremost guiding factor in the reopening of the economy. In addition, according to Dr. Shaw, the health and safety of Maine's people will guide each phase of the process. And Maine CDC work closely with the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development on an approach that balances both the health of Maine's people as well as with the health of our economy. And the main CDC will be tracking three primary metrics in its evaluation of whether or not to progress with each additional stage. The first is the downward trajectory of influenza-like illnesses and COVID-like syndromic cases. Two, it's a downward trajectory of documented cases and newly hospitalized patients. And we've seen a reduction in number two, which is hospitalized patients. And three, the capacity of Maine's hospital systems to treat all patients without crisis care and the ability of the state to engage in a robust testing program. At present here in Maine, there have been 1,095 confirmed cases. There's been uh, 39 new cases from yesterday, uh, 53 deaths and 630 re 631 recoveries. Certainly all very good news for our state. Uh, in the U.S. alone, 1,175,145 cases, 66,734 deaths, and 147,701 uh, recoveries. And globally, at present, 3,407,089 confirmed cases, 237,674 deaths, and 1,022,634 recoveries. According to the World Health Organization, along with the CDC, the true figures are believed to be much higher, in part because of limiting testing and obviously difficulties in counting those that have passed, passed away. In addition, the World Health Organization has certainly said that rushing to ease coronavirus restrictions will likely lead to resurgent in the number of illnesses, which is something that Maine CDC, our local health departments anticipate and that's something that we've been planning for. This warning comes as governments all across the US and really globally have been rolling out plans for and in an effort to get their economies up and running. So we understand that some feel uh, that the current restrictions are too aggressive, but as Dr. Anthony Fauci said, and he's the American's top infectious disease expert warned, 
unless we get the virus under control, the real recovery economically is really not gonna happen. But in Maine and in Westbrook, we are gonna do it gradually and we are gonna do it smart. We're gonna be doing it conscientiously. From a public health perspective, I think that Westbrook and our businesses are doing an excellent job of remaining vigilant to stop the spread of the virus by continuing to implement all the measures and recommendations such as social distancing, hand hygiene, because at the end of the day, it's all about striking the right balance between keeping people healthy and allowing economies to function. And I think we are all readying ourselves for a new way of, limit, of living really in, in what's considered the new norm for what's gonna be a foreseeable future. And on that note, for more information, folks can visit the, uh, our website, the main CDC website, the federal CDC, CDC website, or the WHO. Um, Mayor Foley also stated that uh, to reach out to your neighbors, to reach out to your friends, because this will be something that's gonna be long lasting, but we are excited to move into phase one and hopefully through the additional phases. Any questions, please reach out to our office. We're available anytime, seven days a week. Thank you, Mayor Foley. Thank you so much, uh, Chief, for providing us that update. And just wanna take a moment to publicly thank you for all the work that you've done. Uh, having a, a great team member like uh, uh, Fire Chief Andrew Turcott as our public health officer, we, I feel like the city of Westbrook has been in a, in a much better place of being able to have the appropriate guidance and the movement to help protect our community. And fortunately, we haven't had a ton of cases here in the city, so we've been able to be vigilant and, and take care of those. So uh, Chief, thank you. I just wanna remind everybody again that we uh, are available um, to take questions throughout this, um, this event today, both via Facebook and um, through the Zoom function. It looks like we've got about 10 or so people joining us on Zoom. Um, someone did raise their hand. We won't be taking a verbal um, Q&A, but if you want to submit a question through the Q&A section of the Zoom function, uh, we would be happy to help you um, get your question answered. And also on Facebook, we are monitoring those comments as well. With that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Peter Lancia from the Westbrook School Department to provide us a quick update. Before he does, I just wanted to mention to him um, that uh, unless he had a chance to read my announcement, I did, and again, just uh, uh, reiterate that they had uh, uh, continued with remote learning for the remainder of the year, but I also indicated uh, all the work we were doing, Dr. Lancia, to help honor the Westbrook High School class of 2020 to include many different special events and uh, banners placed throughout the downtown recognizing seniors. So we, we are looking forward to those efforts uh, to recognize the class of 2020. So wanted to just let you know that I mentioned that as well. But I'll turn it over to you, uh, Dr. Lancia, to provide us a quick update of, of the work you continue to do. Great, thank you, Mayor Foley. I hadn't seen that yet because I was just over at our food distribution site. Today is uh, National Lunch Lady Superhero Day. So we uh, wanted to celebrate all the people that are contributing to our, uh, our, our meal program that's feeding thousands of kids, literally thousands of kids every week. Uh, we wanted to thank not just the, the, the lunch ladies, the people who are preparing the meals, but the drivers who are out delivering hundreds of meals every day to homes, uh, the staff from all of our schools who are taking turns to distribute the food curbside at WRVC, uh, the custodians who are taking care of our buildings, the people who are prepping our books on uh, on Wednesdays for our, our Westbrook Reads Book Day, all of our, our essential personnel who are on our front lines and on site helping to take care of the children and the families of our community. So uh, it was a great celebration. We had a lot of folks do a little drive by in the rain, uh, honking horns and celebrating them. And on that note, I just want to uh, mention that uh, all of next week, is actually school staff appreciation week uh, and we're asking that everybody in the community uh, if you can come outside of your house or uh, onto your porch or shout from your window or connect virtually online Monday at six o'clock uh, in the evening if you could come outside and clap and cheer for uh, the phenomenal people who work for your schools uh, as a way of saying thank you, as a way of, of recognizing all the hard work of our teachers, our counselors, our administrators, the office staff, the, the lunch ladies, the custodians, everybody. Um, if, you can, uh, if you can do that, that would be phenomenal. 
and uh, there is uh, an event uh, page connected uh, to uh, on Facebook if you want to post any videos or pictures of kids. Our staff really loves to hear from their kids. We're really missing our students during uh, during this distance learning time. So anything you all can do to uh, to help celebrate uh, our phenomenal school staff who have just they continue to outdo themselves every single day. They really love this community as do I, and and, and we all uh, we all are very appreciative of the support we're getting from everybody. Um, as as the mayor did say, we are continuing with distance learning through the end of the school year, and we do have. Uh, you know, really good participation. I just want to thank the parents and the students um, who are who are participating. Uh, we have uh, at some of our schools almost 99% participation of our kids. Uh, on average, it's about 80. Last week, it was about 88% of our students. A week before vacation, it was about 88% of our students who were participating in some some form. I'm really pleased that uh, our students who needed technology, who needed a device, have been given devices. Um, as, as part of our, our distance learning program. We've also just uh, received a number of uh, Wi-Fi devices uh, to enable uh, hotspots for families who don't have uh, connection. We have a, a list of families who don't have uh, Wi-Fi connection. We'll be contacting them so that we can continue with this uh, throughout the rest of the year. But I'm just really pleased and thankful to our kids uh, and our community. We're, we're all missing each other very much, but uh, you really are outdoing yourselves in terms of, of the, the distance learning. And a, a, a lot of families and a lot of uh, folks are concerned uh, that they are, are not maybe making all kinds of progress or making a lot of great gains. They are, trusting, trust that they are. Just by staying connected to school, just by reading a lot, by, uh, by rereading books, listening to stories being read aloud, practicing math, just by being engaged, we're maintaining our learning and we're maintaining progress and the kids will be just fine. They truly will be. We have magnificent special educators working with uh, students with special needs. We have our counselors, our therapists working with kids with, uh, with social and emotional challenges as well. The kids will be just fine um, and we, we have them for the, for the remainder of this year and moving into next year as well. We are starting to uh, do a lot of planning about the end of this school year in terms of celebrating the class of 2020. Some of those celebrations actually begin this week. We traditionally have a dinner that honors the top 10% uh, of our graduates, the top 10 highest achievers in our graduating class. Uh, we can't have a live dinner, but we are delivering meals to, uh, to our, our top 10% so that they can have dinner and celebrate virtually. Uh, Mr. Garrett, one of our co-principals, uh, is organizing that and will be the speaker of that event. We'll start that as our really our first of our graduate events uh, for the spring. Also next week, we have our annual National Honor Society induction, and we have our National Art Honor Society induction as well. We'll be doing those virtually, but we will be celebrating, uh, even though we're doing so in a little bit different, a different venue. We're not quite ready to announce uh, full plans for uh, graduation, but we are making plans for graduation for the class of 2020, uh, and it will be a celebration like we've never seen before. Uh, we are looking to hold that celebration on June 6th, which is the scheduled graduation day. Uh, we are just working out some details. We've been working closely with Chief Turcott and with Captain Goldberg from the police department, with other community leaders uh, of some businesses to uh, help us to organize a celebration. Uh, like I said, a celebration like we've never seen before uh, that's going to really honor uh, this magnificent class. Uh, and it really is a fantastic graduating class. If any of, of, of our listeners or any people who come to Facebook know kids in the class of 2020, they are, are pretty incredible. So we will be uh, doing our best to, to celebrate them, uh, even though it's in a little bit of a different, a different format. We're also making plans for what our summer programming will look like. We're hoping to uh, hold some sort of summer learning uh, for our families, uh, as well as for, uh, for all of our, our students, as well as for our, our students in special education and ESL and Title I programs. Plans for that will be announced shortly. And we are making plans uh, to be back in school uh, for the next school year 
Uh, we are working on a lot of different scenarios uh, because we don't know what will happen. But at this point, we are planning to be back live and in person for the next school year when that begins uh, at the end of the summer. Uh, again, we're, we're, we're learning how to be uh, as flexible as we can be. We're learning to be nimble. We're also learning to juggle a lot of contingency plans because a lot, I think, develops on how the state does with its gradual reopening and how the pandemic continues. But uh, I just want to assure everybody we are making uh, lots of plans and we'll be involving people uh, in different stakeholders uh, in making those plans uh, as well as we look at the end of this school year we look at summer programming and we look at the next school year as well. Um, in the meantime, our summer, uh, our, our, our school meal program continues every day, 11 to one. Uh, you can pick up meals at WRVC. Families can also order meals to be delivered if you are quarantined in your home or if you don't have transportation and you can't come to pick up a meal. All you have to do is go online to our website and fill out a very brief uh, form. Uh, or you can call uh, the superintendent's office and order a meal and we will have that delivered to you. We do uh, ask that you leave a, a tote or a box or something uh, at your front door that our drivers can put, uh, put the items into. We don't make face-to-face -face contact. Uh, that, that's just to provide uh, another level of, of safety and social distancing, but we will leave food uh, for you uh, if you'd like to order that. And that, again, will continue every weekday. We have extra food. Uh, thanks to our friends at Good Shepherd Food Bank, uh, as well as the Locker Project, uh, fresh groceries, produce, bread, some dry goods, even things uh, like flour and sugar uh, that, that are sometimes hard to come by. Uh, we have those that we are able to distribute on Mondays, uh, Mondays at WRBC. Uh, and on Wednesday, it's Westbrook Reads Book Day. So come and get some books. We're starting to distribute books for adults as well. So we want to make sure that everybody keeps reading. Uh, and eating <laughs> and, and staying connected during this, uh, during this challenging time. It's some of the ways that we can uh, help to brighten uh, the day uh, and hopefully we're able to, to stay connected and we're able to, uh, to help however we can during this, during this, uh, this time. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Lancia. I continue to hear uh, great things from constituents about the work that you guys are doing and, and continue to advocate that uh, they feel like we in Westbrook are way ahead of a lot of the other districts and are planning and dealing with these, these situations. So I applaud you and your staff. I've, I visited the meal uh, uh, distribution location a couple of times and, and just uh, cheered those folks on and look forward to honoring everyone next week for the uh, staff appreciation um, as best we can and we encourage everyone to participate. I did have a couple of questions um, that came in. Um, one of them was uh, how can we get involved to help with activities for the class of 2020 uh, or are there any other volunteer opportunities that may be needed uh, for the schools and I can speak to some others. Yep. Um, there, there may be some volunteer opportunities just where we're kind of in this uh, in, in this new stage, this phase one, the governor's phase one of, of starting to reopen the state. We may have some more opportunities for volunteers, but at this point we haven't had uh, volunteers come in to, to help like with food or with books. Um, we, we've relied on just our school staff for that. There may be some opportunities coming up. Um, if there are, I'll certainly announce those. Uh, I, I send out an, uh, a nightly uh, email to families uh, and we've just started a school department Facebook page. Uh, so we'll be announcing those kinds of things if there are opportunities available. Um, and if you would like to, to, to help out with the events for the class of 2020, you can contact um, Jeff Garrett. He's one of our co-principals and he's uh, taking the lead for the graduation events. You can contact him by email. Just go to the school's website or Facebook page um, and you can, you can contact Mr. Garrett to see if there are some opportunities. There are a number of events that... Um, traditionally are, are live and very festive. Uh, they'll still be very festive. They'll just be, be held differently, but there may be some things. And I know some, uh, some, some wonderful uh, things are happening, like banners will be going up to, to honor the class of 2020. Um, a, a number of lawn signs, uh, Full Court Press has provided uh, lawn signs to celebrate our graduates. And those beautiful things are just, just a testament to this community and how much this community is supportive of each other. Um, so uh, you may, but if you wanna reach out to, uh, to Mr. Garrett, he'd be the, the perfect person to help you out with any, any um, volunteer opportunities. 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Lancia, uh, on that. Definitely, I know, um, I'm not sure what the project graduation involvement is and stuff like that, but I'm sure they'd always be looking for donations um, as well. And, and Jeff Garrett would probably know who to direct those folks to who would like to give donations. But we here in the city are participating with as much as we can, utilizing city resources, and we'll be working to hang the banners. And so we're excited to, to see those up. I've been uh, coordinating with some folks from the project graduation to for the banners specifically, and we're looking forward. Um, our public services staff is, is able and ready to get those hung as soon as we can. So I look forward to seeing the first one up. So thank you again. I feel like the school department and the city are collaborating as better than ever, and I look forward to us continuing this into the future and, and working hard to be able to, to serve the, the citizens and our students here in the community as best as possible during this difficult time and better uh, going forward. So thank you uh, uh, for your efforts on that. We did have um, one question in the middle um, during this that came in on Facebook that's not school related that talked about how many cases in Westbrook. Um, we're, we're unsure of the exact number because the CDC doesn't release them community by community. We believe there's approximately 30 or so confirmed cases that have happened during the time period, though a lot of folks have recovered. And a lot of the cases in Westbrook, I believe, have been in isolated areas and situations. So we, we, we feel like the um, the actual documented cases in Westbrook are limited. But if somebody is working with their physician and they call and they, and they believe they might have it, they may, uh, and they don't have any adverse effects from it because this, the virus affects everyone differently, they may stay home and self-recover and never um, actually be tested um, for the virus. So uh, we definitely uh, know that things are improving here in the city and uh, we just, we look forward to um, the data uh, continuing to reflect in a positive direction. So with that, um, I will, uh, we answered that question and the question about uh, volunteer opportunities. We may also have some city volunteer opportunities that come down the pike. We're not sure where we do have staff available. Uh, you know, some of the suggestions early on during this process is the way to volunteer and to help is to stay home and to uh, follow the guidelines so we can best protect everyone. And I do know there's a lot of organizations seeking donations. So if you do have that ability, um, I know the My Place Teen Center who's serving the meals uh, to their community uh, and checking in with um, teens are, are looking for funding. The Locker Project, who uh, Dr. Lancia mentioned is helping with food, is looking for resources. And there are many other nonprofit organizations here in the city of Westbrook that have either shut down or, or funding has been reduced, will continue to be needing. So I encourage everyone who has the means to help to do that a, a, as much as possible and again help by checking in with with people in your community friends uh, people you haven't seen in a while and seniors check in with them to make sure they're okay offer to help go get some groceries or, or things like that uh, those are always great ways to help everyone as we go through this with that I will uh, turn it over to uh, Daniel Stevenson our director of economic community development we're excited about opening up as this is stuff. And, and before Daniel starts, I, I mentioned a few new programs, but also I want to mention everyone to check out the City of Westbrook Facebook page. We just posted, and, and Mayor Michael T. Foley Facebook page, we posted some pictures of the interior of Market Basket at Rock Row. We are very excited for Market Basket to be opening. They're right now showing a summer 2020 opening date. And uh, so we hope to be able to open that facility soon and it's coming right along. There's also a link for job applications. They are hiring a lot of employees of varying skill sets. So we encourage you to get your application in to get working. And there'll be a lot of other ancillary stores that open up and are announced soon at, at the Rock Row location. So keep an eye out for those as well. We are very excited about the momentum that we have here in the city of Westbrook and, and the opening of that store uh, in Market Basket get to kick it off. And in addition, as I mentioned, the ribbon cutting uh, on the uh, expansion and deck, outside deck at the uh, Frog and Turtle. We had a uh, online Westbrook Environmental Improvement Corporation meeting the other day, and one of the owners, Guy Cody, was, was out on Zoom 
on the deck showing everybody the view. And so it's a great view and it's gonna be a gem to have in our community. So we look forward to celebrating the reopening of businesses and restaurants in the city of Westbrook uh, with a kickoff at the Frog and Turtle. So we are looking forward to that, that special day. Dan, uh, I'll turn it over to Dan to uh, introduce some of the uh, economic development uh, items we've launched and what we're gonna do to support the community with the, re the state's restart restarting plan. Dan, go ahead. Thanks, Mayor Foley, I appreciate it. Um, I am getting the unstable connection, so hopefully I will not go in and out. Um, but uh, with that- Okay, with that, um, I, I would like to start by saying I'm going to discuss three of the programs um, that we have launched in the city of Westbrook. And, you know, quite frankly, Mayor Foley, um, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased, um, you know, with the teamwork of everything, your leadership. You know, this will be the third local grant program launched in less than five weeks. It's really pretty remarkable. It demonstrates how you can be nimble, how you can be flexible, um, how you can really reach out and support our business community, especially our small business community. And many of the small businesses are cash businesses. So saying that um, the Small Business uh, Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program, when we started discussing this not that long ago, um, it's really a result of talking to a number of small businesses, um, sm uh, business organizations, um, as well as other economic development practitioners, including other elected officials. And what we're really learning is that in sometimes a quagmire of what's available at the federal level, uh, what dollars, when are they gonna evaporate, how do you access them, and everyone's trying to make things work. What we've learned is uh, small businesses really struggle with commercial rent, uh, especially in the form of a grant. There's a lot of loan programs out there. There's more loans um, that we move moving forward. So this is a very straightforward, direct cash support to Westbrook small business, small businesses in order to pay uh, their commercial rents. So it's really pretty straightforward. Um, we have an online application, very similar to Westbrook's takeout and delivery is an, and very similar to the Westbrook Warren Memorial Foundation um, fund application. We want it to be easy for people to upload documents, but essentially it will be $15 grant. It'll be paid directly to a landlord for any small business that can, you know, demonstrate revenue loss uh, due to COVID-19. There needs to be 50 or fewer Westbrook-based employees um, at, at, the, um, at a location um, in, in uh, Westbrook. And so you'd be able to fill, uh, upload um, some information uh, to, that will be to follow. Um, and you'll be able to get direct uh, rental assistance in the amount of a grant of $1,500. Um, a city employees, elected officials, and home-based businesses are not eligible for this program. And as you had stated, Mayor for, uh, Foley, it still needs to go before the council this upcoming Monday. With respect to Westbrook's takeout and delivery effort, um, very excited. It's been uh, very popular. Um, I think people are really liking your spinny wheel too. I think it's pretty exciting to see that. Um, it's generated a lot of buzz for businesses in addition to some of the additional cash, you know, that's coming in because people are able to upload, um, upload those receipts. It's really pretty straightforward. P participants purchase hundred dollars of takeout or delivery from a Westbrook establishment. They upload the photo of the receipts totaling hundred dollars on our online form, and um, they get put in, uh, they, get, they get put in um, the kitty, if you will, for a, a, a $100 gift card that you uh, pull weekly um, uh, live. Um, again, it's been running for five weeks, and we've received approximately 50 entries. So there's a, a minimum of $5,000 uh, right in the economy, and there's probably more than that. It's just that people are not you know, uploading their receipts. We wanna continue uh, pushing that out. We want more participation. We are excited about the participation to date though. Um, the Westbrook Warren Memorial Foundation Emergency Arts Fund, as you talked about um, earlier, you know, this was created to help uh, professional artists. And that is, you know, actors, performing artists, visual artists. Um, and, you know, we're very thankful the Warren Memorial Foundation um, had, you know, had gifted the city $50,000 for exactly this purpose. They're flex, uh, they are also $1,500 grants, not loans. The flexible funds are meant to cover lost income under this program. 
To date, there's been 15 approved ap applications totaling $22,500. And that's only been up two weeks. We're very excited about this. Um, you can, the links to our grant programs, you can just go to the, the city's coronavirus uh, page and you can click on the business resources and recoveries link and it will bring you right to where you need to be. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me via email or call. With respect to a restarting Maine's economy, um, you know, and you know, as for those who don't know, or some clarification for those who have been reading this, the easiest link to go if you're a business wondering about the uh, the four phases that the governor announced uh, for the the state's reopening, the best easiest place to go is uh, you go to maine.gov you know slash decd for those who don't know decd is the Maine's department of economic and community in community development you can literally just use your search engine and plug in plug in Maine decd the, the front screen will come right up um, the covid19 checklist com compliance form is right there as well as the checklists for businesses they're the first two things uh, on the front page uh, Mayor Foley, we're also going to provide these links as well um, on, on our site as well. Essentially, what's happening is you're self-certifying um, that you will comply with the, rescript, uh, with the uh, restrictions uh, based upon the CDC guidelines. And then as you fill that out, that self-certification, you will be able to download a badge um, to, to post. You're not required to post the badge. You are, however, you know, required to follow those safety precautions that you self-certified. The benefit of downloading and posting that badge is you're letting the public know, look, you know, we're out here, we're in compliance. We filled out, we filled out uh, the, necessary, the necessary compliance form, and we just want you to know that we've done that. They'll also, by doing that, any updates that the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development provides, you'll be able to uh, be on a direct link for that um, to know what's happening uh, moving forward. Also, uh, the city's economic development staff, uh, feel free to reach out if you're having struggling, you know, how to get there, you're not sure how to walk through that, we'd be more than willing to either walk you through it, you know, online or, or uh, over the phone. So that's my update. And if you have any additional questions, I'm right here, man, forward. Thank you uh, so much, Dan, for your update and the work that you and your team are doing. Uh, we look forward to, to being a resource to help businesses navigate. But as Dan said, the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development has a great resource on their website to help us uh, with that as well and to help get, uh, get certified uh, during this situation. So we thank you uh, again for all the efforts and look forward to helping our businesses with those recent programs and look forward to uh, getting those programs approved um, at the council. Uh, we, we are very uh, excited in Westbrook to have these programs, though we do have limited resources and we want everyone to understand that we're doing the best that we can with what limited resources we have. You'll see some other communities in the area, uh, Saco and Portland, maybe offering some loan programs. That's something that we don't necessarily have the administrative staff or capacity or funding capacity for those loan programs. But we do know that there will be some regional loan programs available and we're uh, confident that there'll be a lot of banks and financial institutions in the area who will begin some offering some community support loans as well. So we, uh, we look forward to helping you navigate those and seeing uh, what is available to, to best help you uh, in the community. So we look forward to, to working with everyone as we begin this reopening and, and try to retain and grow the businesses that we have here in the city of Westbrook. And, and we look forward to doing that in the various ways we've outlined. Our other guest that we have uh, today is uh, State Representative Drew Gatteen. Thank you, Drew, for joining us. One of the things I mentioned that Drew is working on is advocacy for funding in the CARES Act. The state of Maine has received $1.2 billion of money to assist in responding to the coronavirus response, though the funding is potentially limited um, of what it can actually be used for. So Drew, and as I mentioned, Senator Kathy Breen, 
and State uh, Treasurer Henry Beck have been looking at ways to try to encourage Congress to provide some flexibility to that funding and to provide some additional relief to help balance the uh, impacts of the financial crisis. And Drew's been working a lot on that and also has some update to help with some of the recent unemployment challenges that some folks in our community have had. And Drew is a great resource. He'll make himself available. I think he'll give out his personal cell phone number. Maybe, maybe not now after uh, some guy on Fox News last night, but maybe he will. Uh, he usually always shares and always keeps himself uh, accessible to help us here in the city. So Drew, uh, take it away. Thank you very much, Mayor Foley. Um, again, really appreciate the invitation uh, to come and talk to the folks in Westbrook. Um, and and uh, let me just say that I think these types of updates that you and other city staff and the school department do are um, incredibly helpful uh, during these difficult times. And I'm sure Westbrook people, I appreciate it as a citizen, the opportunity to hear all the great things that are going on in Westbrook. Um, I think this kind of communication goes a long way. Um, and again, I, I, like I said to you earlier, Mayor, I, I, I kind of like going last because uh, uh, you guys cover a lot of the things that I, you know, that I, that I could also cover. So I appreciate the opportunity to go, uh, to go clean up today. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, there's been a lot of, there's beginning to be a lot of conversation in the press about the uh, short and long-term impact of uh, what's been happening to the state and local economy. Um, as a member of the Appropriations Committee, uh, you know, I'm very, very focused on the impact on the state budget. Um, I want to talk with you folks a little bit about that today and how that potentially impacts uh, Westbrook and the things that we need to keep our eye on. You know, without a doubt, you know, there's, there's no reason to sugarcoat this. Uh, you know, this crisis is going to lead um, to a, a pretty dramatic reduction in uh, state revenues. Um, Maine has been in a period now of 10 years of economic growth, which, which leads to revenue growth. Um, Maine revenues are in many respects a reflection of the world and national economy. Uh, in order to fund state government, we rely on things like income tax and sales tax and fuel tax. And if people are working less, if people are, are, are purchasing fewer things, if people are driving less, it's just natural that all those um, revenue sources are, are going to be reduced. We create a state budget based upon future projections. Um, and then we track to those projections on a, on a, on a month by month basis. Um, and again, another important thing to remember, and I think you mentioned it earlier, Mr. Mayor, with respect to uh, the city budget, under the main constitution, the main state budget has to be in balance. Ultimately, we cannot spend more than what we take in. We are not like the federal government where we are allowed um, to run deficits in order to fund things, even in an emergency basis like this. So from a projection with respect to the state budget and the state economy, frankly, we are still in the very early stages of trying to understand that. Um, we saw a, the beginning of a drop in state revenue when we looked at March uh, revenue. Um, we haven't gotten the April revenue report yet. We'll get that within, within a couple of weeks. So a lot of what we're hearing now is really based upon speculation and projection. And again, a lot of that speculation is done by very smart people um, who spend a lot of time looking at these things, but we don't really have a lot of real numbers yet for us to build future budgets and, and really assess the impact of this. But some of these projections that we're seeing are, are showing that there could be a reduction in state revenue of between 20 and 25%. Obviously, that is a lot of money. Um, to put it into context of, of, of annual state budget, you know, that, that could be something in the, you know, of a $200 million loss in the fiscal year that we're currently in, and then maybe something along the lines of a billion dollar reduction in revenue for the next fiscal year. So these are the types of challenges that we're gonna have to respond to. This is really important with respect to the city um, and the people that live in Westbrook, obviously for a number of different reasons. First of all, there are a number of very significant programs that, that um, flow from the state directly to the city in order to fund important operations. Municipal revenue sharing is one of them. That is a direct reflection of, of state revenue. When state revenue goes down, municipal revenue sharing naturally follows. Um, also, as, as you all know, 
um, uh, the Westbrook School Department relies on state funding for um, K through 12 education. A, a large portion um, of that comes comes from the state. Uh, that's a very large part of the state budget. So again, we 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 need to keep our eye on that. Other important city programs, maybe smaller programs like general assistance, uh, are supported by the state. And then with respect to individual residents of Westbrook, um, things like the homestead exemption, things like the property tax fairness credit, um, things like the main care program that a lot of older and disabled people and kids rely on for health care. All of these things uh, rely on state dollars, which is why we need to look at this stuff very carefully. So as legislators, especially those of us on the Appropriations Committee, we've been trying to track this as best we can having frequent conversations with the administration, um, talking to our other colleagues within, within the legislature, Democrats and Republicans are still um, working together uh, really well in trying to understand this. We definitely have a common interest um, as we move forward. We're probably not going to get a new revenue reforecast until later in the summer. And that's because, again, we're probably not going to have the kind of real data that we're going to need um, in order to do a revenue reforecast until then. And it's really that revenue forecast that is going to um, allow us to move forward and, and make adjustments uh, to, our, to our budget. If there's any piece of good news here, and, and again, this isn't really good news, but I, but I think it's going to be helpful, is that Maine probably has more in reserves right now than it has at any time um, in its history, maybe, uh, certainly, certainly in recent memory. We have um, $250 million in a uh, budget stabilization fund. We have um, $193 million that we have left into the general fund when we adjourn the other day that would be available to us. Um, we have $29 million in a specific stabilization fund uh, for, for main care. Uh, the federal government is sending us some additional money to support our main care program, and we think that's going to free up about $100 million in general fund money. And then the Mills administration is also looking at other accounts that the state has that have unspent dollars in them. So, so we are trying to pull together a real careful view of what we have available to us for reserves. Um, you know, frankly, these reserves are, are, are probably not going to be enough to get us through this crisis, but they're going to be extremely helpful. So the CARES Act money that the mayor referred to before is part of one of the earlier stimulus packages that was passed in Congress. It can, it may, under that um, stimulus package, Maine has received $1.25 billion from the federal government uh, in order to respond to the challenges uh, related to, the, to, to the, co the COVID virus and the pandemic. That's, that's a lot of money. And, and again, if you, you think about the numbers I just laid out for you in terms of possible shortfalls, that money could go a long way in terms of helping us. Unfortunately, the current guidance that we're getting from the federal government is that the state is not allowed to use that money to backfill revenue. It can only be used for going forward new expenses related to the pandemic. We've been working, we've been trying to push our, uh, members of our congressional delegation. States have been trying to push uh, the, the, the administration in Washington in order to really sort of maybe change that point of view. Because again, like I said, even if we could use a third or a half or a significant portion of that CARES Act money, that could go a long way uh, to preserving the integrity of our state budget, which again will be very helpful to us in meeting our obligations to Westbrook schools, to revenue sharing, and to all these other programs that are so important to the people in Westbrook. So we're going to continue to monitor this. Um, we're going to continue to push our congressional delegation. Um, again, we'll, we will have real numbers um, probably at some point over the summer. Uh, we certainly think that these reserves that we have now are sufficient uh, to get us through the current state fiscal year. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and again, those reserves will certainly at the very least buy us a lot of time in trying to figure out what, what, what we're going to do in the 2021 um, fiscal year. So, um, you know, I will continue to uh, keep the city uh, and uh, Westbrook residents updated 
on what's happening with respect to the overall impact on the economy and, and specifically the state budget and how that impacts Westbrook. The only other thing I wanted to say, I, I know we're running out of time, is um, again, you know, probably the number one issue that people are bringing to me uh, still relates to um, issues with the unemployment system and the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor um, is um, uh, added some additional staff, 100 additional staff. Uh, we are pushing to get all those issues resolved as quickly as possible. People are waiting way too long in order to get the benefits that they need to survive this. Um, I know they're working very hard, but, but as legislators, we are also pushing very hard to make sure these issues get resolved as quickly as possible. Today is the first day that um, people who are self-employed and, and uh, people who work as contractors and as members of the gig economy um, can actually apply for unemployment through the system. Um, I will post some information today on my Facebook page. Um, I'll share it with the city to make sure that people understand how to do that. Um, but uh, we are gonna continue to work to make sure that, that people get those benefits. So uh, thank you for the time uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, uh, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Drew, and thank you for your efforts uh, in Augusta as well. Uh, we're looking forward to getting some answers on some of those items, and it's definitely a challenging uh, budget, and, and their negative effects on the economy definitely affect all our budgets, and so we're doing our best here in Westbrook to try to, as you said, a combination of reserve funds and cuts to try to balance that budget to bring forth no tax increase uh, to the tax rate here in the city of Westbrook. As we know, this is a difficult time for all our residents and our businesses, and we don't wanna be an additional burden on you here in the community. So we look forward to announcing that budget in more detail uh, on May 18th, as I outlined in my message and working with the city council and the finance committee uh, to get that budget uh, passed uh, in the June timeframe so we can do a school budget validation uh, referendum in July. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. I think we've got to all the questions. Uh, before we go, I did want to mention that um, also on Monday, it's International Firefighters Day. And uh, we posted, uh, the Westbrook Fire Department posted on their Facebook page and I've shared on the Mayor Michael T. Foley Facebook page that uh, if you're able to, to put a red light bulb in your outside lights uh, to show your support for our local firefighters and fire department. And so uh, you feel free to join us all in that effort to uh, show the support. In addition to next week, as Peter mentioned, uh, Dr. Lancia mentioned the um, uh, teacher appreciate or school staff appreciation week. So we're looking forward to honoring uh, all these folks next week. Also, um, next week, uh, Monday morning, we'll be having a story time with the mayor. Uh, I'm not sure if the deputy mayor, uh, Joseph, will join me or not. Um, he is, uh, as, as everybody phases into things, he's uh, being phased back into uh, some structure with some preschool, and uh, 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 his mom is very excited for the free time. <laughs> uh, and so uh, he may be starting uh, school on Monday. So we may be looking to potentially adjust the time frame so we can get it before school because I know everybody loves to see uh, Joseph joining us. And we'll be reading a book about firefighting um, and we encourage everyone to, to tune in. If not, it will be recorded and people can tune in. Also uh, Monday evening, we will have a special city council meeting um, before our regularly scheduled city council meeting with a brief executive session. So for those watching now or watching later, don't be alarmed if a meeting starts and then it goes away, you didn't miss anything because we'll be going into executive session and then we'll return at 7 p.m. with our regular uh, city council meeting. We'll, we will be approving some items that we've had pending as well as I'll be providing a similar update today, uh, maybe not in as extensive detail, but of the city of Westbrook's reopening plan. As always, with all of us, if any of you have any questions about anything, feel free to contact us on social media uh, via our phone numbers uh, here at City Hall. We'd be happy to answer questions. Again, a reminder, the with City Hall transactions, if you have any that you just wanna drop off your tax payment, they can either be mailed or we do have a bucket a box outside to drop them in, building permits. Starting on Monday, we will be taking appointments for folks to come in one at a time to meet with planning and code staff at our counter um, and to either apply for building permits or answer any um, urging questions. 
And uh, for those who are having difficulty to pay their May 15th property tax payment, please contact the tax collector's office. That information is on our website, and we'd be happy to work with everyone through the end of the fiscal year to make sure and assist you uh, in that process. And then for those er itching to register their vehicles, um, again, and the previous executive order from the state has uh, allowed the vehicles to go uh, unregistered or expired until thir within 30 days after the state of emergency and the, and the governor lifts that executive order. So you do have some time. If you want, you can renew online if you'd like to get that over with, if you've got to get an inspection or something like that. Otherwise, you don't need to do it until after. You can uh, uh, mail in registration renewals if you want with checks. Call in advance to make sure you have all the information that you need or email those as well so we can get those taken care of for you. We will have, just like announced today, the backlog of businesses that are reopening and, and hair salons and barber shops. We will also have a backlog here when we reopen on June 1st. So we encourage everyone to be patient. Uh, utilize the social distancing um, that's recommended. Get your masks, join me uh, with your mask and out in the community when you're in places where social distancing is not possible. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, positive things happening, continuing to happen here in the city of Westbrook and that's recovering uh, from this difficult time. We are a strong community and we'll be stronger after. So look forward to seeing everyone soon and uh, returning um, to more life as normal in the future. Hope everyone has a wonderful day and uh, let's hope and pray for some warm weather this weekend. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks again to everyone for joining us.